Pastor, welcome to today's episode of the Niger Ombudsman, and I welcome you to this particular episode. Today, I'm going to be addressing two issues. The first one has to do with uh, Femi Falano's um, address at the just-concluded Labour Party retreat. Um, and then the second one has to do with uh, Israel, or Ladele Genesis's comment or statement during one of his um, Sunday services that has now gone viral. For Femi Falano, uh, Femi Falano is a man who is well respected, is a man that I love um, in the sense that he has shown great patriotism for Nigeria. He has shown his great desire for justice. He has shown his great desire for progress, to see equity, to see accountability. He's a man who has stood up to represent the poor. He has stood up to represent the oppressed in society. He has fought consistently for a better Nigeria. So that is one of the reasons why, these are some of the reasons why I respect Femi Falano uh, as a man. And I will say that he is one of those in the judiciary that, that has stood up consistently for the truth. And so that is why I very much cherish his comment or um, address at the just concluded Labour Party um, summit or retreat. There are some of there are some takeaways from that particular um, address in the sense that he did say that Nigeria has no business being poor, and I fully agree with Femi Falano, SAN, in the sense that Nigeria is indeed too blessed. Is it human resources? Is it natural resources? Is it the weather? We are a blessed nation, extremely blessed. But I'll say that we have also been an ungrateful people. The leaders of Nigeria have basically made a mockery of the blessings God has given to us. And my prayer is that there will be a change. Uh, some of the takeaways from Femi Falano's address, uh, one, of the, one of the ones that really touched me was when he said that there was a study that they conducted between 2011 and 2014. And from this study, uh, we, have to, we have to understand that this time frame was within the Jonathan administration. He talked about the fact that from their survey of, or from their study, they found out that the oil crew that was lifted from Nigeria and shipped to different parts of the world, in this particular case, to Philadelphia in the United States, that they found out that between this period, there was an excess of over 58 million barrels, 58 million barrels of crude. When you compare what was delivered or what was brought in when the ship betted in Philadelphia and what was lifted in Nigeria. So which means that 58 million barrels was basically stolen because it was in excess of what was officially recorded in Nigeria. It is sad. And he equated this to about $12 billion. $12 billion. I can only imagine how much that would have changed our country if such amount was well utilized. Today, we can also see that it is reported that over 90% of crude oil produced in Nigeria is stolen. 90%. So which means that the economy of Nigeria 
is largely based on less than 10% of the revenue that is officially reported from the sales of oil in Nigeria. Today, it is also reported that over $700 million worth of crude oil of, of, of crude oil is being lost daily. So revenue of over $700 million is being lost due to looting <clears throat> of our crude. The issue of crude looting has been a problem and it has gotten worse. We also see the issue of the subsidy scam or the subsidy problem. During the Jonathan era, there was a study conducted, there was an investigation conducted, and it was found out that some of those involved in abuse of the so-called subsidy, they would go as far as some of them they will take less than what they have reported as crude, ship it out to international waters, and then when they are now bringing those, that back, the, the figures of refined crude is now escalated or uh, greatly increased. And then there were others also who were reported to have shipped water out to international waters and then shipped it back. There were also others who went out with empty vessels to Bene and then returned back to Nigeria only to receive the amount for what was not delivered. But investigation, investigations was carried at that, at that time. There were people who were indicted, but nothing has been done till this moment. And during the Buhari administration, things have just even gotten worse. There was a case of a ship that came into Nigeria unauthorized without the legal papers to lift crude oil. This same ship was seen close to the loading bay for crude. Alarm was raised. The Navy did say that they had asked the ship to leave our waters. In some countries, that vessel will be, will be seized, will be seized. But I understand that this same ship, which they said did not have oil, sailed and it was now seized or intercepted in Equatorial Guinea. The issue of corruption in Nigeria has become an epidemic. I, I do not even know how Nigeria can extricate itself from this problem because uh, the, the, the greed, the greed which starts from the top has just become too much. It, is, it, it has brought a decay. Nigeria is now a shadow of what it ought to have been. How can a nation not have the required equipment to record how much crude is being explored and pumped. How, how can a country not have such sensitive equipment 
other countries that produce oil, they are able to account for their oil. In terms of stolen crude, I also, I also believe that the international community are complicit because in the case of the ship that was intercepted in Equatorial Guinea, 16 Indians were there. There was a Filipino. There were Sri Lankans on that boat. And also, how can 58 million barrels be shipped from Niger in excess of what was recorded in Nigeria be shipped to the United States without such amount being questioned? Like I said before, the international community, they are complicit. Because a ship cannot come into your waters without accounting for how it got, where it bought the crude from, with all the legal papers. So I think that if the international community are really honest to themselves, they also have a role to play in checkmating this problem of stolen crude. I know our leaders are just wicked, evil to the core, most of them. And that's why I agree to the statement of Obasanjo some years ago while he was in office. He did say that the majority of politicians in Nigeria are certificate forgers, corrupt, courtist, and looters. This, this, I'm quoting the words of Obasanjo. Nigeria right now is in dire straits. And I hope that we get things right in 2023. And that takes me to the second issue that borders on the message that um, Oladele Israel Genesis preached um, on one, in one of his Sunday sermons. He boldly said that he as a Yoruba man cannot vote for an Igbo man. That is why he's voting for Bola Tinubu. Really? For a man that says he preaches the word of God. What does the what does the Bible say in Galatians chapter 3, verse 28? It says there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither born or free, there's neither male nor female. All are one through Christ Jesus. So in your congregation, I believe that there are people from different parts of Nigeria. So coming out to make such a declaration was pathetic. I know everyone has the right to choose who they want to vote for in the coming election. But you cannot tell me that the basis of voting for a candidate is simply because the person is your tribe. For a man who stands on the pulpit of God to preach, if you have now become divisive based on where people come from, you do not qualify to be there. As a preacher of the word of God, you are supposed to be a unifier of people. I am campaigning for Peter Obi. I am not an Igbo man. In 2019, I campaigned for Showare. I'm not a Yoruba man. If we talk about the unity of Nigeria, then 
it is sad if you at this time do not know that the problem of Nigeria goes beyond where you come from. Tribalism is one of the reasons why Nigeria is this way. That is why, like I said before, I love the likes of Femi Falano because it's a man who is seriously detribalized. Nigeria needs a new tone. Tribalism, ethnicity is one of the things we cannot hold on to if we truly desire a Nigeria that the progressive ones seek to see. We talk about racism. Racism is no different from tribalism. It's a pity that Oladele Israel did not talk about the competence of a candidate. He did not talk about experience of the candidate. He did not talk about the precedence of a candidate. He reduced the whole equation of the forthcoming election to whether the candidate of his choice was Yoruba or not Yoruba. I'm happy that there are many Yorubas who do not think the way he thinks. And for Nigerians, our nation is at a dire straits. We can see already the great damage the PDP and APC have caused Nigeria. It is not my place to tell you who to vote for or not to vote for. But the love that I have for Nigeria is what drives what I'm doing. Think wisely and vote wisely in the forthcoming election. Our children have been at home now for over seven months. I remember I lost a year, a, an academic year, because I was in school during the Abacha Babangida era. I finished my bachelor's when I should have been concluding my master's degree. And the same issue continues today and is worse. If you think you want to continue to Nigeria like this, vote for somebody because he's from your, if he's from, he's your tribe. But if you desire a better Nigeria, if you genuinely love Nigeria, if you are fed up with the sufferings of our people, then we think beyond tribalism and vote for competence. I pray that God will give you a blessed day and I pray that God will bless Nigeria and give us the sort of leaders who have his fear 